Hello, my name is Mohamed Reza Jokar and I'm a PhD student at the University of Chicago. In this video, I'm presenting our QCE 2021 research paper. This research is on performing quantum gates using superconducting pulses, which are generated inside the quantum bridge. The authors of this work are part of EPIC, which is an NSF expedition in computing. Me and Professor Fred Chong are computer engineers and Rich Rines is a physicist. Here's the key message of my presentation. Superconducting quantum machine prototypes are available today, and that's great. But an important question going forward is, how can we scale these machines? One of the critical challenges of scaling today's machines is the costs associated with having a room temperature classical controller. And one solution proposed in the literature is to push the controller to the fridge. Now, SFQ is proposed as one of the promising technology enablers to design such controllers. Prior work showed high fidelity single qubit gates using SFQ pulses, but we also need two qubit gates in order to realize universal quantum computing. But there is a lack of a detailed analysis on SFQ based two qubit gates. In this work, we show that it is very challenging to realize such gates due to high leakage to non-computational subspace. We then show that we can realize such two qubit gates with high fidelity by engineering an SFQ friendly quantum system. Here is an overview of this presentation. I will start with the motivation for infringe controllers followed by presenting SFQ based control approach. After that, I discuss the design requirements for realizing high fidelity SFQ based two qubit gates. And after that, I discuss our evaluation results. So let's start with the motivation for infrage controllers. Superconducting quantum computing is one of the leading quantum technologies because of convenient qubit design and qubit configurability. There have been prototypes with less than 100 qubits manufactured in recent years. You see an example of these machines in the picture on the right. The quantum fridge holds the quantum chip and microwave control signals are sent from the room temperature controller to the quantum chip. These microwave signals are used to perform quantum gates. Current design has severe scalability challenges. One critical challenge is massive electronic costs to generate and route microwave signals from the room temperature to qubit chip. In addition, a large number of high bandwidth cables from room temperature create a big heat load problem at millikelvin stage of bridge. So a solution proposed in the literature is to push the controller to the fridge. On the right, you see an schematic of such controller that can be realized with different technologies. CryoCMOS is an attractive technology for infrared controllers because of the maturity of CMOS logic. There has been prototypes based on cryo-CMOS. These prototypes generate microwave pulses inside the fridge. You see an example of such microwave signals at the bottom of this slide. Cryo-CMOS based controller prototypes can scale to few hundreds of qubits, which is determined by the power budget of the fridge. So cryo-CMOS is great for medium scale quantum machines. Meanwhile, superconducting single flux quantum is magnetic pulse-based logic, where zero and one logic are encoded as absence or presence of the SFQ pulses. In addition, prior work showed that these SFQ pulses can also be used to perform a quantum operation instead of microwave pulses. Because of very low power consumption, SFQ is a great candidate for larger scale quantum machines. In this work, we focus on SFQ. Now let's see how to perform quantum gates using SFQ pulses. Prior work realized single qubit SFQ based gates on transmon qubits. In this qubit technology, we have free evolution, which is shown with orange on the block sphere. As you see, we have a full rotation in a qubit oscillation period. Now an intuitive approach to perform a single qubit gate is to apply one SFQ pulse every qubit oscillation period. Each SFQ pulse deposits some energy to the qubit, which realizes 
a small rotation around the x-axis as shown on the black sphere with blue. Now, if we keep applying these pulses at the correct time, we can do X rotations. The timing of applying these SFQ pulses is the key. By changing the timing, we can change the implemented quantum gate. So this is an intuitive approach because we basically drive the qubit with the oscillation frequency of the qubit. As far as the implementation, the SFQ pulse train can be encoded in a bit stream, and we can store it, this bit stream on the SFQ chip. The controller logic then processes the bit stream one bit at a time and apply one SFQ pulse to the qubit if the bit is one. Prior work showed that such intuitive approach leads to high leakage from the computational subspace and also long gate time. Here, the computational subspace includes the first two energy levels of the transform. And leakage is the probability of measuring the qubit in a higher energy level at the end of the quantum gate. Prior work also investigated optimization techniques such as genetic algorithm to find better SFQ pulse strains. These approaches explore the bit stream space to find the ones that can deliver low leakage and short gate time. Prior work modeled three first energy levels of transmon and showed that this is enough to achieve low leakage to non-computational subspace at the end of the gate. Now, in order to realize universal quantum computing, we also need to do entangling multi-qubit gates. But there is a lack of a detailed analysis in the literature on SFQ-based two-qubit gates. In this work, we focus on realizing high-fidelity SFQ-based two-qubit gates on capacitively coupled qubits. Again, an intuitive approach is to drive one qubit with the frequency of the other qubit. This is similar to what we know as cross-resonance gate in today's systems based on microwave pulses. We notice that we can realize entangling gates with this approach, however, Again, we see high leakage and long gate time. So as a next step, we started looking at optimization techniques to find better SFQ pulse trains. One question here is how many energy levels should be modeled in our optimal control? Ideally, we would like to have infinite energy levels, but in practice, it would be computationally expensive to do so. More importantly, our model breaks if we go to much more than five levels. Given these practical consideration, we model up to around five energy levels. Now, here is the results of the SFQ pulse trains we found to do a CZ gate. Unlike single qubit gate case, we see that we cannot realize low leakage even in a five level system. Now, let's see what's the reason. We notice that if we do not actively suppress leakage, during the execution of the gate, there will be some leakage that will not be captured in our model. For example, the solid line in this plot shows the population of the highest energy level, which is the fifth level in this case, during the quantum gate execution. The population is low at the end of the gate as our genetic algorithm optimizes for it. So one might think this is a good result. But the problem is that the population at the highest energy level is high during the gate execution. And that leads to some leakage to even higher energy levels that are outside our model and is being artificially suppressed by the limits of the model. So we basically cannot capture this leakage in our model. So even Though the results look good in, in the five level model, if we model one extra energy level, we see the high leakage. See the dotted line in this plot. So we need to actively suppress the leakage during the gate execution. Now I discuss our approach to realize low leakage SFQ based two qubit gates. We have two knobs to reduce the leakage of these gates. At the software level, 
we do modifications to our quantum optimal control method to actively suppress the leakage during the quantum gate execution. And at the hardware level, we investigate various qubit architectures and configurations in order to reduce the leakage. At the software level, we model one extra energy level and penalize the leakage to that energy level. And we do that after applying each SFQ pulse. The result is that we now can learn bit streams with minimized energy population outside of the highest energy level in our model. In addition, we also expand the solution space. The control is limited in SFQ because at every uh, at any given time, we have only two options, whether we apply or not apply a pulse. We don't have a fine-tuned control the way that we had in microwave pulses. So we expand the solution space and accept solutions that are accurate up to single qubit rotations around the z-axis. Such solutions are acceptable because z-rotations can often be commuted through subsequent gates or implemented virtually. By expanding the solution space, our search space becomes larger. And as a result, we can find SFQ pulse trains with lower leakage. Now, at the hardware level, we look at different qubit architectures. In addition to transmon, we also study fluxonium as it has high unharmonicity and is designed to naturally suppress leakage. We also investigate having various control fields, omega x and omega z. Capacitive coupling is used for omega x, and inductive coupling is used for omega z, as you see in the circuit. Finally, we look at this parameter called tip angle, which, de which determines the amount of energy deposited per each SFQ pulse, which in turn determines the rotation angle after applying one SFQ pulse. Tip angle is determined by the capacitance and inductance values. A smaller tip angle allows more fine tuned control of SFQ pulse strains, which helps finding better gates, but it can also increase the gate time. Now let's see our evaluation results. We adopt the genetic algorithm used in prior work and incorporated our software techniques. Genetic algorithm starts with a population of random SFQ pulse strains and refine them over time to reduce the error. You see an example of an SFQ pulse strain in this slide. In this example, we assume we have two qubits and each receives one omega x control line. So at each step, there are four possible actions that determines whether we apply an SFQ pulse to individual qubits or not. We calculate the primitive unitaries corresponding to each action. And these unitaries are used to calculate the final implemented unitary. Then we can calculate the error of the final unitary and use genetic algorithms to minimize this error over iterations. There is another piece here. In order to suppress the leakage during the quantum gate execution, we model six energy levels. So our primitive gates are six square by six square. Then we project the unitaries down to five square by five square. And this is equivalent to penalizing leakage to the sixth level. Now let's see the results. We start with transmon with omega x control fields. We study a range of possible tip angles that are used in the literature from 0.003 to 0.03 radian. Our results show that although tip angle of 0.03 is good for single qubit gates, it does not work well for two qubit gates. Here, we need 0.003 tip angle to achieve low error of 10 to minus three. Also, note that this low error is achieved with longer gates, which is 40 nanosecond here. Now, let's see the impact of changing the control fields. 
Here we see the results for omega Z control field. Our results show that we can realize fast entangling gates in the order of 10 nanoseconds with omega Z. And that's great, but omega Z alone is not sufficient to realize arbitrary single qubit gates. So we cannot do both two qubit gates and single qubit gates with omega Z alone. One design to do both two qubit gates and single qubit gates is to use both omega X and omega Z controls. However, this translates to more complex control system. Also, it leads to increased sensitivity to external noise. Another approach is to change the qubit architecture. We investigated fluxonium in our work, which we'll see next. As you see in this slide, it turns out that we can do fast entangling two qubit gates in the order of 20 nanoseconds with fluxonium. We also can realize fast non-entangling two qubit gates with fluxonium. So fluxonium is a good choice for SFQ. Finally, in the last slide of the results section, we do a comparison with microwave-based gates. These microwave-based gates are learned using grape algorithm. We see that SFQ fluxonium has similar result to microwave transform. The message of this slide is that in order to achieve gate error and gate time similar to microwave-based gates, this engineering effort discussed in this presentation is essential. Next, I will conclude the paper presentation followed by a discussion on future work. In this talk, we showed that we can realize high fidelity SFQ-based two qubit gates by actively suppressing leakage, expanding the solution space, tuning the tip angle, and using different control fields and qubit architectures. We show that SFQ can achieve similar gate time and gate fidelity to microwave after carefully designing an SFQ-friendly quantum system. So SFQ is a promising approach for quantum control as it can deliver scalability as well as high fidelity quantum gates. Now let's discuss future work. If you have more accurate qubit models, we can model more energy levels and that leads to better gates with lower leakage. So this is one research direction. We also need better optimization algorithms with faster time to solution. In this work, we use genetic algorithm which is relatively slow compared to algorithms such as GRAPE, which are used to find microwave pulses. Finally, we also need to design a scalable infrage controller logic. In this presentation, I talked about how to perform quantum operation using SFQ. To have a complete controller architecture, we also need to design the controller logic. We thank researchers from different institutions for the valuable discussions and generously sharing their codes with us. And with that, I end my talk. Also, this is my email. Please feel free to contact me. Thank you.